Okay, uh, so hello and welcome to this additional e tutorial. This one covers how to run a simple bivariate Pearson's correlation in SPSS. Um, if you're doing what I'm going through alongside as I'm going through it, you might want to write the values that we're going to be using in, which are these ones here, now and pause it, um, and then I'm going to go through it. Okay, so we want to know what the relationship is in terms of a correlation between these data here and these ones here. Okay, so what we do is we go to analyze and then we go correlate and then bivariate and then we take these two variables in, click one, select the other one, and click that one. For now what we want, because it, we're assuming various things are going to be doing the Pearson's correlation coefficient, there are these other types here um, which we'll be doing at another point in time. And then you want it to flag the significant correlations and we'll see what that does in a moment. Okay, so now we hit the OK button. Okay, so some aspects of this might seem a bit strange when you first look at it because you'll notice that what it's doing is it's telling you the correlation between alcoholic drinks versus all the other variables, all the other columns that you entered in as part of your bivariate correlation. So you'll notice first of all that you've got alcoholic drinks being compared to alcoholic drinks, and then alcoholic drinks being compared to extraversion. Um, and then extraversion being compared to alcoholic drinks and extraversion being compared to extraversion. So it is a bit confusing. You've only got two here compared to each other, so actually any one of these boxes, which is this one or this one, which are identical, are the ones you need to worry about. Uh, the reason it does it like this is because if you had, say, ten different things you were correlating, you'd end up with a gigantic grid all the way across the screen. Um, and what this would do is it would have a diagonal column and all these things here would be all identical to each other. In a way it's quite nice because what you can do is you can say well alcoholic drinks should correlate perfectly with themselves because they're the same data and you get a perfect correlation of one there. Okay so just a quirk of the way the stats works. Okay so what we need to do now is to work out whether or not this is a significant correlation or not. And the first thing we can do is look at the sig two-tailed which is remember the, the two-tailed two-way um, test for significance and we compare that to a p-value of 0 0.05 the p-value here is 0 0.025 and as that's less than our critical p-value of 0 0.05 we know that there is that means this is actually a significant correlation and what kind of correlation do we have? well we have a correlation of 0.923 um, if you graphed it as a scatter plot you would see this is a very heavily positive correlation between the alcohol drink and the extraversion and a moment ago when we selected it, told SPSS to flag significant correlations, uh, what that does is it's a very lazy way of letting you no not need to bother about looking at the sig thing here. And all it does is then it puts a little asterisk and then says correlation is significant at a 0.05 level, two-tailed, if there's an asterisk next to it. So you can ignore all the sigs and just say 0.923, oh, there's an, there's an asterisk there, therefore it's significant and we have our significant effect. Um, the thing to remember here is that when you're reporting your uh, degrees of freedom for this, uh, you've actually got SPSS is giving you n value of 5, but really what you want is degree of freedom, which in this case is going to be n minus 2, okay, which is 3. Um, and there we go, it's nice and straightforward.